Hey peeps, welcome back to the Growth Lab podcast. I'm your host, Matt Harris, and I run the Growth Lab, a lead generation consultancy for commercial cleaning businesses. In today's episode, I chat with Joe Rose, Managing Director of Purevo and PPG Cleaning Concepts. Joe's businesses manufacture innovative eco-cleaning products for both the business and consumer markets. Joe launched Purevo four years ago and is now the UK arm of PPG Netherlands and manufactures brands such as Evie Green, Sophie Blue, and many more. He is a product innovator and is currently working with liquid manufacturers and resellers to reverse engineer their cleaning solutions into powders. We talk about Purevo's target audience, the adoption of eco products in the B2B space, what has triggered the biggest shift to businesses using eco products, how building a core base of customers has helped grow his business, and why Joe thinks more people need to change to using sustainable cleaning products. More tips on lead generation and insights on the most successful strategies, tools, and tactics to help grow your cleaning business. Sign up for the Growth Lad newsletter the link in the episode description. You ready? Let's dive in. Hey Joe, how you doing? Yeah, good, thanks. Would you mind just giving uh, the listeners a quick introduction as to who you are, give us a bit of your background and how um, you got started with your business? Yeah, so uh, I had a career in corporate for a big air conditioning company where I started a cleaning chemical business for HVAC cleaning, so that's for cleaning air conditioning units. Oh. Um, I, at the time, I was introduced to a brand in the Netherlands called Evie Blue, yeah. and they're based in Rotterdam. To cut a long story short, I exited that corporate and started a business called Purevo. So that was importing and distributing EV Blue products from from Rotterdam. So it's a compostable sachet in a box. So rather than buying a oh nice. I can't see it there properly well, but rather than buying a, a bottle filled with liquid, you buy a sachet and yeah, cool. fill it up on, on site. I've been running Purevo for four years, eco distributor across really the southeast where I'm mm-hmm. from in the UK. And earlier this year, I actually got directly involved with EV Blue in, in that I now represent them in the UK as a manufacturer. The reason for that is nice. we can now do lots more white label projects with um, them on the ground in the UK. So I can't mention the names of the products, but we can reverse engineer liquids back into powders so if there's a big okay. um, high volume user of plastic we can take their their formula reverse engineer it back into a powder and then it makes them massively more sustainable one big white label we did that for reduced their plastic output by 27 tons a year so oh wow that's quite a, quite a major difference we can make yeah right and who's your target market for this I, I, I know that might be a bit of an obvious question but who's your ideal client who who are the customers that so, generally come up on so the EV, the EV blue range I just described then is B2B, hotels, restaurants, offices, commercial cleaning contractors, okay. anything like that. So yeah. um, that's, that, that's that kind of flagship brand. And then all the white label and domestic stuff we do under separate brands. So that they'd be less familiar. But I mean, the market is so broad. We can do anything from car cleaners to domestic cleaners. It's very, really? very broad market. And has there been more of, um, of a take up for sort of eco and sustainable cleaning products? Because, you know, we spoke just before we went live and I, I said when I started my cleaning business, we started using uh, eco cleaning products. But you know, they're, they're, the options then this was what ten years ago weren't that great. And there were a couple of market leaders. But like, how how has the market evolved now? Is it is it a much easier sell into into businesses in particular? Uh, it's not it's not easier. The one thing that's changed is is clients. So cleaning contractors are now semi being forced by the client that they're okay. cleaning for to, to be more environmentally friendly. So it's it's still a battle. Not everyone wants to buy the eco product, but yeah. certainly coming out of the out of the pandemic, I think a lot of people came to the realization of how much damage we are doing to the planet and want to to make a difference. They can see how much damage single use plastics are doing. And the cleaning market has such a huge part to play in this, you know. Mm-hmm. commercial cleaning contractors hotels that are using traditional ways of cleaning they are charging through single-use bottles on the daily yeah and we, we i tell everyone this you can't trust recycling so sure. i think i put some stats, stats on my linkedin the other day is only 12 percent of U, the uk plastic is actually being recycled so you're happily putting it in a bin think it, you know going to be reused or repurposed and it just yeah. really isn't so the, the ethos the ethos of our business is actually just to remove the problem if you have a bottle for life 
<laughs> and you keep refilling it. Yeah. You know, you're not you're not even trusting those waste cycles of recycling. Yeah. What's the process been to kind of start the the paradigm shift for contractors and you know these uh, big B two B clients um, to start adopting the more sustainable products? Like, has has there been a lot on the marketing front? Because I, I saw that you you um, you started an, an initiative as well a couple of years ago. Is that right? Around the yeah, yeah. sustainability, like things like yeah, that. So or... we we yeah, we started the cleaner 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 world. Of Association. So the idea behind that is about getting all of the eco product manufacturers, suppliers, customers, everyone into one place because all the time we work separately from each other, we're not creating the, the momentum all of the products need. It's about everyone working together for the sake of our planet, really. Yeah. We we market all of our products tons. There strangely there's been a paradigm shift because of costs in logistics recently. So if you actually uh-huh. remove the the eco element to it by shipping there is six litres of clean chemical there so 12 500 mil bottles yeah just already already it weighs a couple of hundred grams you can start to get your head around the carbon footprint storage the amount of lorries that are needed to move stuff around everything reduces so you can be more cost effective in your application to the market people are starting to come around to that idea now it, it, it's all flowing in the right direction we're getting there it's an uphill battle though hey we're trying to change habits I think just yeah. before this call we were talking about how it's cleaning industry can be quite stuck in its way sometimes and doing something polar different a complete polar opposite to how it's traditionally been done can make it an uphill battle sometimes for the game. Yeah, I can imagine. So with with that in mind, you know, you, you mentioned uh, setting up the business. In terms of the growth from when you started, has it been gradual? Has it been in, in spikes? How and, and what has influenced the growth of your business over that time? It, I'd say it's lumpy. It comes and goes. We get some great wins. Um, we did well with the non-alcohol hand sanitizer during the pandemic. That was a yeah. great win, putting out things that you know, safer for children to use in schools and things because alcohol can be very, very damaging if used in the wrong, wrong application. But yeah, it, it, it's steady growth, really. It's those minds are changing. People are starting to get used to the type of product. I mentioned before as well, before we came on about um, some large white label OEM projects we've done. I can't mention the brand, unfortunately, sure. but um, we've reverse engineered some products from liquids back into powder and that's been great for the business. So you're, you're taking a manufacturer's volume um, and then translating it into a, an eco solution so that was a real upturn for the business is that something that has been rolled out to a lot of cleaning companies in particular or what who has been um it's actually it's actually b2c so okay that's a retail that's retail product okay so you come across them in a retail space right right. b2b we haven't done really any white label for people that's where we're selling the easy blue brand into into main distribution um, and large cleaning contracts okay so just to think about i guess the the challenges that you know that are generally being faced with sort of the eco and, and sustainable uh, cleaning chemicals if you had 10 times the marketing budget that you have right now like where would be your focus what what would be the message that you wanted to get across and what would be the the best channel for you to to deliver that message to the people that need to see it that one of the most powerful things we can do is sampling now that costs money so everyone that uses our product instantly gets it and is instantly turned around to the concept yeah. unfortunately putting out thousands of sachets into the market costs money um, yeah. and uh, isn't really a logical way that we could spend our marketing budgets at times that that is the most powerful way to turn people around is give them some stuff try it and they're convinced they get they get it do you do you host just thinking about that then do you like have you i reached out to sean um sean brogan and he mentioned obviously yes. that you've sponsored some events uh, or you've contributed to some events that um, they've hosted down in Southampton. Like, is that is that also a good way to, you know, a, a, a test case for for people to come in and try and get an experience of using using the products? Um, in the retail space, yes. You know, if we're doing anything B two C, we could do more and more exhibitions and giveaways. B two B, it's really getting in front of contractors, show them how it works, let yeah. some cleaners use it, and um, minds are changed generally. We're always happy to give away free samples. Um, your question was, what could we do with a, a bigger marketing budget? And that is yeah, the, yeah. the very best. The very best thing is, is you know, send big sample packs out to everyone we could. Let's just pull on that thread a little bit more. If if you were able to send out the sachets um, ad infinitum, for example. Like who would be uh, who would be the biggest beneficiaries? Who who would you target the 
the most or who would you target first who would be top of your list that would um, be able to spread the word of the brand as well cleaning contractors you know every cleaning contractor we give samples to now once they've kind of been through a bit of a, a mindset change bit of training as well um, they start buying our products uh, hotels it's really really popular with just for cost control so if you can imagine hotels generally if they're using five litre concentrate they're diluting they never quite really know how much product they're using per floor per room with portion control controlled sachets you can actually get down to the finite detail of cost control your cleaning across each floor each room of a hotel so it's really yeah. really powerful for them but in a different way to just the sustainability just staying on top of all that that cost of overusing or underusing concentrate and in terms of performance you know just and i'm speaking from my own experience when we use eco products within the business they were good for a certain level of cleaning i don't you know i'm sure the the performance has advanced you know over the the last 10 years my experience they were good for sort of domestic type cleaning but not necessarily your deeper end of tenancy cleaning where where you need a lot more uh, activity to get rid of grease and grime and that kind of stuff. Like how yeah. how has the solutions uh, or how have they evolved over over the last ten years? Certainly, like it, can they be on par with the sort of more stronger chemical products that are available on the market for for cleaning contractors? Yeah, absolutely. It's about application, and also we have some pro line ranges that can't be in the compostable packaging. The reason for that is that their pH is either so high or so low it, it eats the packaging, and no they mind. can't. So with those, I don't have one here with me, unfortunately, but um, we do them in tiny little plastic jars, um, which we then make circular. So you can send the jar back to us okay. for it to, be refi- to be refilled. Oh, nice. Probably, you said you used Delphis before, didn't you? That's Similar right, kind yeah. of thing. You know, it's packaged in plastic. You can bring it back to us. We brought out those ranges because, as you say, as commercial cleaners, sometimes you've got some really, really nasty jobs to do. So we can get much more extreme pH levels with those. So you, you dilute the super concentrate jar into a five litre dilute it again based on the strength you want so if you do it pure as it is it's the strongest strongest and then you can vary it based on application yeah i think that that was really the the biggest hurdle that we had at the time i mean other than that you know the the fact that it was circular in terms of application and being able to send back and refill all of that was great and delphis at the time ran ran some great uh, initiatives as well which was super useful in terms of you know looking forward for the business like where where are you looking or, or what's the next step in in the growth of your business you mentioned you, you focus on the southeast like is is the initial plan to sort of take over the uk and um, for that that's that's purely pure evo for the for the ev blue it's yeah. national you, you know they're in europe we're an international international gig really we want to we want to get the products in every market that we can um, yeah always looking to, to talk to more distributors around the uk that want to make a sustainable difference as well but yeah pure evo is mostly focused on the southeast but uh in terms of what's, ne- I mean, the products can do lots and lots of different things. We love the opportunity to reverse engineer existing liquids, yeah. as I mentioned earlier. That's a great win for the environment and for us as a business, because as I said, one of the OEMs we do it for, they, they're reducing their plastic output by 27 tons a year. It's massive. You know, the, the, envi- the incremental environment gain that we can do by reverse engineering for someone is huge. That's quite a big, uh, big plus as well. So why, how, with Pure Evo, how come the focus has only been on the Southeast right now? What, what has been? I'm not, I'm not a national player of a, you know, I could reel them off now. The Jangros, the Bunzels. Yeah, and, yeah. You, 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 to fully satisfy the customers that I have, I yeah. have to focus on a specific area. And that's what Pure Evo really does is it's, it's supplying contractors across the, and hotels, cafes across the Southeast with everything sustainable they need. Talk to me in five years. I'm like, but yeah, but, right. But um, yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about lessons in business. Is don't don't cast your line too far. Sometimes it's something I learned very early is you know you can. I was master importer of this product. I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to take you know I'm going to take over the UK. And before you know it, you've achieved less than if you'd have just had that micro focus on the on an area. Do you, do you think just you mentioned lessons in business? Do you, do you think that taking that one particular approach has had the biggest impact on your business like focus like really focusing on one area getting it getting the the service delivery and the product right for the target market in that area before then looking to you know replicate or expand and um, i think 
I think probably because I came from a global business in my corporate, maybe I was a bit too confident that it would just roll out nationally as well. I mean, as a reflection upon myself, maybe I was too confident that it would just be an easy walk in the park. But the one thing we're focusing on an area, and the same would be said for any cleaning contractor, you know, you mentioned Sean earlier, he's building a stronghold around Southampton and, you know, growing out of Hampshire. When you've got that core base of customers, yeah. you've got refer you've got referrals happening, you've got reviews coming in, all of the core things that help you market what you do quicker and easier, you know, you've got those reliable customers talking about you, recommending you to people, you know, and that 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 helps you grow. I think if you try and go national too quickly, yeah. and look, everyone base there's lots of debate on this about on LinkedIn at the moment. Everyone bases their ethos on these unicorn businesses like yeah, um, yeah. Gymshark <laughs> or yeah. You know, I'm going to be the. It's Ben Francis, isn't it? That's um, right. Yeah. You, you know, you know, you can't. Every, all entrepreneurs do it. Like, oh, I've got this great idea. You know, this product I've got is brilliant. Love it. It's going to be the next big thing, and it's going to explode nationally. And I'll walk off into the sunset, a happy man. But the the reality is, is that they are unicorn. Uh, you know, the, there are there is only one Apple, there is only one Tesla, there is only one Gymshark, and for the rest of us, the reality should set in pretty soon that if you're building from the bottom, yeah. focusing focusing on a more concise area of customers is probably the best thing you can do. You're 1,000 true fans, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, you've, you've been saying it in the communications you're putting out, up and cross-sell is one of the most powerful things you can do to an existing customer. If you can get them to buy more from you, that is a yeah. much easier much easier win than getting a new customer. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think, you know, that's it's often something that is, especially from like a cleaning company perspective again just you know speaking from my experience it's something that you tend to uh, dismiss because everything is about growth growth scale 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 like i need to you know cast my net as as wide as possible whereas actually you know the approach that you've taken you found your area you planted your flag and said look like let let me get everything right for this community right here because that then is going to provide me with, you know, the foundation to to then move on to the next stage, whatever that next stage is, whether that's, you know, introducing additional ranges to that community or whether that's, you know, taking the current range and expanding it beyond, you know, the remit that you, you your audience right now. I think on reflection, I, I wish I'd taken a little bit more of that approach when I when I had um, when I had my business. But it's certainly something that with starting this podcast, with sort of uh, putting out content online right now, it, it is more on okay. Let me focus on on one particular market. Like let's serve that market as best as possible. You know, providing a broad range of experiences within the industry to provide value to you know the the broader audience. Um, and once it's happened for for cleaning, then obviously the options are there to to kind of look at what may or may not be next. Um, but it's important, I, I think. Yeah, I think it. I think it does come back to what you're strategically trying to do as well because as I mentioned I now work um, directly as part of the manufacturer so my scope of work is is much different i.e I can go to someone in Newcastle yeah because they're dealing directly with the manufacturer to then sell them their product mm. sell them my products it, it does depend on your, your kind of strategic de- objective and what what you're kind of trying to sell as well you know if, if people watching now are looking at starting a cleaning contracting business or how do they grow you know a cleaning contracting business i think yeah. what you've been putting out upselling and cross-selling you know can you do can you do the windows or can you do the hygiene bins or you know those things if you're already got you got your you're in the door it's not even yeah. an open door you know you're in how can you up and cross sell across what they're doing and like taking that a little further from your perspective what what would be the natural next step if you for upselling for for you or cross selling like what what are the options that are available to you so so if i'm in with it i've I've got some products that everyone loves the 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 glass cleaner is probably the one that you know great door opener people love it everyone uses and then up and cross sell more of the products um you know oh you're you know you needed a carpet cleaner or um a heavy duty floor cleaner that's where again it's a bit different than for a cleaning contractor it's a product cross or upsell sorry my cat tried to jump on me (laughs) that's all right (laughs) um uh, yeah yeah so we're trying to cross sell different ranges into the the same customers yeah um but we're, we're always looking for new customers as well you know i'm not i'm not saying i don't look for new ones we are looking to roll easy blue out across the whole of the uk not under yeah. pure evo under the manufacturer directly okay. and and looking to, to to talk to distributors everywhere really you know it's uh it's a great range to 
really transform what you do in, a, in sustainability. You're going to save money on transport and you're going to save money on storage um, and your customers are going to get a product that works and helps save our planet too. Yeah, nice. Look, Joe, before we go to the quick fire questions, I've just got one more question to ask in terms of, you know, we've mentioned on business lessons uh, as well. What is the one lesson your business has taught you that you think other cleaning business, janitorial supplies um, would would benefit from hearing? Focus on profit, not turnover. Okay. Turnover is a glory number. Profit is where, you know, you can pay staff, you can pay overhead. Profitability is what you should always be focused on in anything you do. And that's the same for a cleaning contractor, I feel. Yeah. Um, you know, it's better to be making really good margin with lower turnover than it is the glory number of lots of turnover with no margin. Yeah, for sure. That is actually a, fairly, a lesson that, that I learned very painfully as well. <laughs> Every, everyone does. Correct. Everyone does. Yeah, Everyone right. does. We we all do it. Um, you know, the 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 biggest contracts look fantastic. You know, I'd I'd love a thirty million pound contract. Don't have any by the way, but I'd love one. But I bet that's what operating on a three or four percent margin. So you have to think how much how much work will I have to do to satisfy all that stuff, all yeah. that work to actually turn a profit it's sometimes better to have lots of customers at much high profit than two or three monsters yeah for sure um okay i'm gonna uh take you into the quick fire round before we wrap up um yeah, so yeah. first question is uh, what one piece of advice would you give a younger version of yourself before you start off on this manufacturing journey um question keep motivated um, you know, business success does come to those who stick it out um, and uh, keeping motivated, keeping keeping yourself in the game can be very powerful. How do you keep yourself motivated? What what has been your anchor? Do you have like a routine or do you have, I don't know, a mantra or something, you know, like a, a favorite song or something that just gets you back in the zone when you're feeling a little bit low? Exercise generally, mad cy nice. cyclist, cyclist and triathlete. So oh, um, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Get out there smash the miles and then everything will be good again oh amazing um what's one question you wish i'd asked uh, and how would you have answered it wow well, that's a good question i'm not sure how to answer that one you've stumped me some of the responses i've had in the past just a, an opportunity for people to understand a little bit more about the business you know get a bit more of the usp uh, or uh, about a particular learning experience within their the journey of them building their business, something like that has always been quite useful. Oh, yeah, I, I, well, sorry, I did think of one earlier. I'd, I'd like to if you'd ask, why, why do I think people need to change to sustainable products? And my answer would be, think of your kids. So, you know, it's getting hot. It's quite nice, but it's a bit hotter sometimes at the moment. I agree. I like the sunshine, but we are on the cusp of something really bad happening and the cleaning yeah. market has cleaning market has a huge huge part to play in this we go through millions and millions of bottles a year as a yeah. market make the change because everyone will be better off because of it nice and where can people find you to um to find out a bit more about uh pure evo about ev blue uh, about you know your the initiative as well that you've got going on where's the best place um so uh i do quite a lot of content on linkedin um hit me up joe rose and we have facebook instagram um twitter profiles all sorts we're all over the place so search out pure evo uh ev blue and myself joe rose uh, and you can get some insight into what we do that's it we'll call that a wrap joe thank you very much brilliant thanks very much thanks to joe for joining us on the growth lab podcast and thanks to you guys for listening you can access the show notes and resources via the link in the episode description if you enjoyed this episode please share it with others who you think will find it useful across social media or leave a rating and review on whatever podcast platform you listen to you can also follow me on twitter and instagram at i am underscore matt harris to catch all the latest from the growth lab and how to generate more contract opportunities for your cleaning business see you next time and remember if your cleaning business isn't growing it's dying